All right, we're going to slip by then to um, our, tar- our Title IX resolution. Okay, um, tonight we've invited uh, Bia Kulaba, the uh, school attorney that's representing the district, on a Title IX complaint. Um, this is a complaint that was filed last year. Um, we've spoken with OCR on a voluntary uh, resolution, which we will be hitting target dates throughout the summer trying to resolve this matter. But I will uh, go ahead and turn the floor over to Bia to explain what the complaint is and what the proposed resolution would be. Okay, thank you. Um, as you all know, a complaint was filed with the Office of Civil Rights um, back last fall, actually, uh, regarding uh, whether or not equal opportunities were uh, made available to boy and girl athletes at the Florence Park School District. The majority of the complaint is word for word to a previous issue that the district had looked into with one uh, individual who was so worried about the in and out of extracurricular fund accounting. Uh, we went through that and uh, explained everything, and that individual was not happy and tried to get the county attorney to look into the, the complaints and tried pretty much every avenue to um, to prove what he believes is misappropriation of district funds, essentially. Um, so the complaint that was filed with OCR was specific to the in and out, in and out account. Um, however, OCR took a different um, avenue this. They did not find that the district was discriminating against female athletes in the district. What they did say, however, is that with all fundraising, this applies to every school district in Montana, um, when when teams fundraise, those funds have to be split equally between the boys and the girls. And in, in Florence, what was happening was your boys' basketball team fundraised extensively and by running AAU tournaments, and they would get a cut, I believe, of the, the concession stand when they worked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and your girls' basketball coach chose not to, apparently, fundraise in the same level. So the boys were able to spend essentially more money based on what they raised than what the girls had available to them. And what OCR has said is with all fundraising, it goes into one pot and must be divided equally uh, between boys and girls sports, no matter who raises the money. Uh, So I talked with Sam, and he explained to me how the boys' team's fundraise was from the basketball perspective. Most of this centered around basketball, to say the truth. Uh, there was even an issue with referees when the MHSA required that you have three referees on hand for a boys' basketball game due to some previous skirmishes. So just, just to, to back up on that a little bit, um, a second OCR complaint has been filed against the school district this fall, this uh, spring, and we are currently um, in the midst of working through a resolution on it. Um, the bottom line is... Um, I had requested OCR to tell me whether um, safety is subordinate to um, to issues of equality. They would not come out and make that statement. They were not. And um, we had basically stated that we did not, as a school district, choose to discriminate against, um, against female athletes by having fewer referees at their game. But, however, the Montana Officials Association has determined the level of of competition and when you have two teams that are ranked, let's say the number one girls team in the state versus the number two girls team in the state, let's call it Loyola versus Florence, Um, if that were to be the case, the MOAs out of Missoula would recognize right now there will be a lot of press coverage, meaning there's going to be a lot of fans that will come to watch this rivalry game take place. Therefore, they will automatically place three referees at this girls' game because they know they will need the third referee to have an eye in the crowd for things that might be thrown on the court, for the intimidation that might try to be thrusted onto the court by fans against referees. So they need, they see it as a safety issue, and they don't. The MOAs in Montana do not break it down into a gender bias. They break it down into there are certain factors that dictate when they assign referees. We are currently um, looking at that, and the resolution on that will um, come about shortly and will be reported at another meeting later. Um, but this meeting is focusing. Right. So kind of example, there's sort of, there was a kind of a thing going on here to sort of take pot shots at the administration and the board through filing these complaints, essentially. So let me tell you about the one that we're working on now, or we've, we've got it resolved. We entered into a resolution agreement with OCR, and we provided them all the documents. Yes. Just Quickly, Office what is OCR? Office again? of Civil Rights. Okay. It's a federal entity that looks into, for, for school district's perspective, it looks into allegations 
of discrimination, whether it be based on gender, race, uh, all Title IX, which is the federal law that mandates equality between um, men and women in sports, is governed by the Office of Civil Rights. So, um, a resolution agreement essentially was we, we provided all the, the information that they requested. They didn't find that we were discriminating um, in our practice facilities and our scheduling and anything like that. Uh, so, it came down to the fundraising issue. So, we entered into an agreement with them that we would provide them certain information by a certain time. And I'll tell you, we've got some timelines coming up, and the good thing is we've already done the work, so it's just a question of funneling it to them. Uh, we need to um, talk to all of our coaches, essentially, by July 1st, and inventory, essentially, um, what equipment they have. So, for example, when did the boys' team get new uniforms? When did the girls' team get new uniforms? We've got all that information already planned out. Um, we need to do an equipment report for them. We need to identify any significant disparities. So if we found out in, the, in this process that, say, the girls had, had received uniforms for years, but the boys were getting uniforms every year, we have to remedy that. Uh, but we know that that's not the case because we already provided them information. Uh, we have to have a plan by September if we do find any discrimination or if we do find any significant disparities. And we have a full year from July 1st, we have July 1st, 2011, to remedy any disparities we may find. Uh, part of the process of working with OCR is we had to go through it with a fine-tooth comb and you know, look at practice schedules, look at um, equipment issues, look at um, it gets down to the nitpicky of do you get the good bus for your trip or the boys all you know, they can be that particular and we were able to demonstrate that there is there's um, actually a plan frankly I was surprised because most schools don't have it as specific as you guys do but you have your schedules um, down to the wire and so we're we're comfortable with it, everything in that regard is being done. The only change we have to make is in the fundraising. And that's going to be basically directed to your coaches. And you can't force them to fundraise. But if they do, they need to understand it goes into one big pot. The big pot, is that for all sports? Or is it, is it like if basketball's fundraising goes between all the basketball teams? Or does it go into one pot for football, it goes wrestling? Into one pot. And how would that be divided then? Uh, up per to the school. Per, yeah. Well, no, not necessarily. The way they're going to look at it is that you need to look at the, and it's it's also based on opportunities for individuals. So, for example, you've got a lot more boys playing football than you do girls playing volleyball. Um, so the girls are going to percentage-wise probably get a little bit more of that because it's going to be based on, a, you know, on the sport as well as the number of opportunities that exist. So. Uh, most school districts do not keep track of their funds this way. So this is a, this is a, you guys are getting hit first with OCR is looking at Montana in general for fundraising because this apparently has been an issue in other districts uh, where you have one team, for example, with gung-ho fundraising and raising a ton of cash, usually with pretty involved parents, and then you have other teams or sports where they just don't. And, and if it's a girl sport that is in the don't category, you are going to get tagged. So essentially at this point what I've told the sports um, coaches is that any fundraising they do through this summer, go ahead and maintain it as their own. But we're going to have to create a plan, and that plan is going to have to be implemented within a year of July 1st. And what we're going to have to come up with is some kind of formula that OCR would sign off on and agree that would be an equitable distribution of these monies between the activities uh, versus boys and girls. And I think that that formula, you know, as we design it, we're going to take a look at equipment because there is no way that you can match football to volleyball. The equipment costs of that sport is extremely expensive versus um, volleyball. And we will put it together, and if OCR says, eh, don't like that, we'll go back and revamp and keep working it until we get to a point that they deem as an acceptable solution. Um, but that's what I see it as. I see it as an involved process of us um, making effort, and if they don't like our effort, sending us back to try again until we get it. Um, I don't see it as an antagonistic relationship. I see it as a relationship of working together to do what's right, based off of their rules. The attorney investigator that we worked with was fantastic, and went through the complaint line by line through 99, actually through all of it. Now he found a different angle, which is the fundraiser. <coughs> And we just have to be um, aware and cognizant of the fact that um, when teams do fundraise, we have to we still control that. They're using our name, and they're our team to fundraise, so we can dictate and we have to dictate how those funds are spent. So the big stink was that the boys were, were fundraising, and then so they were using that money to buy meals on trips. And 
the board had determined they wasn't going to pay for meals, so the boys decided to fundraise for their meals. And they did. The girls did not fundraise, so they had to pay for their meals out of their pocket. And what OCR would say was, is that fundraising, you can either let them all use it for meals, and then you have to pay for boys and girls both out of that fund, or no one uses it for meals. So. Question on that. Yeah. On the, is that for extracurricular sports only, or is it all co-curriculars for the clubs and organizations? Technically for athletics at this okay. point. That's what I thought at the time. Yep. It is an athletic issue. <clears throat> so did they investigate the in-and-out account also? And yeah. Then, and so There's no the, only, the only thing that they found was the... Was the fundraising. Fundraising. Everything else was... Everything else was fine. And you said they went through it with the fine tooth. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I can't even tell you how annoying okay. it was. So okay. We're, we're talking about all of, all the schools are going to have to comply with this at some point. Um, and so have you heard of how? I was just curious because I haven't heard any other business managers talk about how they're going to how they're going to distribute or do that. I just wonder if you'd heard of any other schools that actually have to have implemented this yet. Okay. <laughs> That's um, you're in, people are watching this because other schools are, yep. are doing things exactly like you guys, yep. which is, you know, they... What they don't have necessarily is one coach flat out refusing to fundraise and mm-hmm. one coach gangbuster fundraise. Yeah. That's, that's what got you and guys that's what, yeah. um, Most school districts, if you know, the kids raise money, they get to spend it how they want, generally. And if you've got one team, I've got a district right now where the girls are the fundraisers. The boys have nothing. Uh, but we're going to see how that shakes out. Technically, they're supposed to, under those circumstances, it goes into one pot. And naturally, the girls' parents are saying, why in the world should we bust our butts to fundraise when we have to share the comments? And so it's having kind of a chilling effect on fundraising for those types of activities. Well, I hope we have that in black and white and very clear so we don't have individual people coming in accusing us of... Well, you're going to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of you. You're going to have parents coming in and saying, this is not fair. What's going on? Uh, but I... I probably may have heard uh, But it's, this is being mandated on you by federal. There's nothing you guys can do. So, but... The federal law is very specific and distinguishes between public funds going to athletes versus um, fundraising, which really isn't public funds coming from taxes. What what they'll say is as long as that that fund is controlled by the school, which your extracurricular funds are controlled by the school, that's that's the nexus they need to determine how that is spent. OCR has slipped into... I'm just curious how they find that as a public fund then. (laughs) <laughs> because you control it. It runs mm-hmm. through your accounting, and you know, it, it's going as far in, in other states are long past us in this area, but they're even looking at private 501c3 booster clubs. The parents have organized privately, and they're saying the school cannot accept their gift to fund unless it runs through Title Line. Let's see, our, our booster wow. club is a, a 501c3. 501c3. It's a they, private nonprofit. Mm-hmm. They have established that. I think, Vicki, you were part of the Booster Club back in the time when they did no, that. when we did that. No. Mm-hmm. But well, but it, it was, was after fire. me. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they're their own little entity, they mm-hmm. can't give you any money without you having to, to ensure that it's in compliance with Title IX. But I would like to say to the board, just to give you an example, everything in the kitchen sink was thrown in this Title IX complaint. And I'll back it up and give you one example of one part of the complaint that really bothered me. Back about four to five years ago, um, we sat in a meeting like this here today. We had some end-of-the-year money spent off. As a superintendent, I made a recommendation to the board, and I said, um, I think what we need to do is we need to take care of the watering that's on the playground, football field, softball field. And so I made a recommendation to the board and uh, from that board I said let's go ahead and put irrigation on the softball field football field. Um, three of the board members, Jim Shreve, Kevin O'Brien, and Rick Paris, balked at that uh, recommendation and said we should not be putting all the money into athletics. That there were other projects in the school that needed to be taken care of. As a result, um, only the football field ended up with sprinkler systems on it. Now, when the complaint came out to OCR, the complaint alleged that there was discrimination against girls' athletics because the school district failed to put sprinkler systems on the girls' softball field. My response to OCR was, how ethical is it the person who was filing this complaint was the person who had the authority and control to put 
the money on the softball field, but refused to do so in an attempt, in my opinion, to set the school district up for future failure on a complaint with your office. And the OCR uh, person said, I sympathize with your plight and where you're at and how you got to this spot, but we frankly don't care. The fact of the matter is, is if it exists and it's discriminatory, we're going to make you correct. The resolution to it was, they went out and took photographs of the softball field in dire sh- straits last summer before we did any work, before Leo and the boys came in and dumped all that topsoil down there and put all that effort into it. Even though it was well known in the community that that was happening, they went down and took these photos and sent it in to make it look like we really were treating the girls poorly and showed the football field as this big green field. And quite honestly, I, you know, the OCR uh, investigator saw through that tactic and realized that just isn't right to do that kind of stuff, to set the school district up like that. And so that is an example, one minor example of the kinds of things that we were faced with in the complaints. And they turned around and they boiled it down to fundraising. And I'll be honest with you, I think that it's, it, it speaks well for the school district to say we've gone through being scrutinized pretty heavily by a, a very firm, strong organization as uh, the Office of Civil Rights. And to come out that this is where we're at, I think speaks very well for the school district. Levin, was, the investigator, was very um, complimentary of the records that we had to demonstrate the practice schedules and the work that went into setting this up so there would be equality. So he recognized that we were actually doing wonderful things. So yeah, you're not one of the few school districts that can make it through something like that with nothing else being an issue. So you, you actually have a great program. So, unfortunately, you had to go through this to find that out, um, that you should be proud of your, your staff, your administrators, um, the athletic folks. They, they work hard to make sure that they can demonstrate what they're doing is appropriate. And you said we have a second complaint that's been filed? Yes, we do. And the second complaint. And what the second complaint boils down to is it said we were discriminatory against female athletes because we had three referees at male athlete okay. games okay. versus female. And what it came down to is there was one game where the when the girls played at Viola, there was only two referees on the floor. There, when the girls played here against Lyle, there was only two referees on the floor. But when our boys played at Lyle, there was three referees on the floor. When our boys played here, there was three referees on the floor. What it amounted to was, we're not in control of that situation. The uh, Montana Officials Association out of Missoula, they dictate the assignments and who they're going to send and when they're going to send them. And so it was completely dictated and controlled by them. And in speaking with Chris Anderson, who is the head official of that officiating group, um, it's a safety issue and a concern, and I agree with him. And when I talked with uh, Levin Kurowski, Kurowski, um, with OCR, he, he was trying to wrap his mind around this, this event that goes on between these two schools. And he recognized that out in Seattle, they have two very strong, high-powered program and boys. They will actually go rent an arena between the two schools to have their event, where when the two girls teams play from that, they don't. And, and so in speaking to him about that, I said, well, is that discriminatory? And he goes, no, we do not consider that discriminatory. We understand how it, it provides for um, taking care of crowd participation who wants to attend the events. Does Loyola get the same complaint as we did then? No, they do not. Hmm. So I, what, what you've got is someone who is obviously disgruntled, and I think we all know why. And so you're going to have a choice. If OCR comes back and says that safety does not trump in this circumstance, then your option is to always have three referees or to forfeit the Loyola games. And I don't think anyone in town is going to be thrilled with you if you start forfeiting basketball games. Or always have two. Pardon? Or always have two. Or well, MOA won't come here. If you don't have three for the boys, they won't go to Loyola if you don't have three for the boys. And 
there have been stuff in the past. I mean, I've sat through a million of those games, and occasionally a random person acts like an idiot. It is occasional, but three refs was a good thing at one point, mm-hmm. and it doesn't happen during the girls' games. I don't know why, but it's... So MOA says they will not come to your district. You will be the forfeited team. So our response to that complaint is um, that in the event of Florence when there are high-powered games between two competitors, we defer to the authority of the MOA Association to dictate um, for uh, safety of the event on the number of officials that they will send. And that I do it with girls, too. And saying that these girls' teams are going to be a little bit of a feisty group, so we're going to put three things having that they could. Yeah. And we have had three officials at girls' events. Um, but just last year alone, we had three officials for girls' games up at Corvallis, but we had it for boys, too. Um, I believe when we played, who else was another one that we played? Mary Hamilton. Hamilton. The same at Hamilton. The boys had three officials, the girls had three officials. It just so happened that between Lyola and Florence, because we don't want to stick the boys' varsity and the girls' varsity on the same night in the same building, because then it creates such a huge circus. We decided we got to separate this out a little for, for crowd issues. And, and think about it. When the boys played Viola here last year, um, the fire marshal probably could have shut us down for the number of people in the building. Think about this. The girls were playing in Viola that same night. So we had already removed a good section of our crowd in that direction. And... That's one of the reasons why we can't have them both in the building on the same night. We don't have the facility to do it. We'd have to start renting, you know, the field house or something in order to do it because, $10, a night. you know, we just can't do it. Yeah. And Grant, we wouldn't fill the field house, we'd, but it, we don't have the seating in our gym to do it. Well, we really appreciate the effort. I'm, I mean, I know, but on the other hand, it's insurance in the bank as far as I'm concerned, yeah, as far as the board and district. You know, we have, I mean, I two attorneys scrutinizing everything that we have. Everything you do. <laughs> the I mean, good thing is, you, you came out of it um, with a so lot much. of compliments from OCR about, you know, how your program worked. And that's, that's rare for a school to get that kind of pat, so. It could be discriminatory against the boys, too, if you think about it. There's an extra pair of eyes there. Well, they uh, call them fouls. Exactly. Huh? I'm a big fan of two reps for a very high degree. <laughs> They don't, they, girls, there's a presumption essentially if the boys get something that girls don't, that there's a presumption that they don't like. That's a discrimination activity. Even when they could very well not suit you. Spoken like a true big man parent. Exactly. <laughs> Is there no, All right, are, they, are there any other questions? Board members? Yeah. Are there no, uh, no frivolous complaint that they won't consider? The, the most frivolous? Well, I've had a couple of things kicked from OCR for just oh, yeah. flat out yeah. frivolous. Um, I think the referee thing is about as close as you're going to get. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they come back and just say, uh, we're not even going to bother with this. But um, OCR changes with different you know, administrations. So when you have, depending on uh, what the focus is, right now OCR is being pretty tight. So you're going to see um, investigations into things that sometimes might have been kicked. At some point, though, and we did it with the county attorney when you know there was a big push to investigate everybody for misconduct. Um, our pushback was, you want to open up that door? You know, we're, we're looking at at this point of harassment. There have been some pretty significant harassment issues to individuals that are taking place, and at some point, the school can step in and say, "Enough, we're done." You want to you want to fight it out? We'll fight it out, but we're a little bit of a deeper pocket than the individuals fighting this. Hopefully we don't get there. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for your Thank you. All right. We're going to move on to non-resident student application.